It is of little wonder why Delana is considered to be one of Brandon Sanderson's more well-written and fleshed-out characters. Indeed, when pressed to give his favourite character, Brandon often cites Delana, not because of how much the author likes him over his other diverse cast of personalities, but because Delana is in fact one of his oldest characters. The character of Delana has been around since Brandon was only 15 years old. Back then he was known as Jared, a young brother to a much loved sovereign who later gets assassinated. Unlike Delana, Jared takes over the kingdom with a plan to shape his nephew into becoming a suitable leader. While the story itself never saw the light of day, Brandon didn't give up on Jared and decided to put him into Dragonsteel where he participated in the Shattered Plains plot that would eventually be shifted over to the Stormlight Archive. The Jared character would then evolve to become Dalnar in the Way of Kings Prime. Like Jared before him, Dalnar loses his elder brother to assassins, but doesn't become king himself. Again, there are deviances from the story we know and love, with Dalnar eventually being compelled to kill his nephew for the greater good. Brandon would, however, decide to take that particular plot element out, believing that Dalnar trying to aid his nephew would make the story more interesting. And I for one am glad he did. Just think, if Brandon Sanderson hadn't spent so long revising and rewriting the entire story from scratch, there's no way we would have gotten this excellent piece of fiction that is, the Way of Kings we have today. It is here where Brandon finally gets the character of Dalinar right. Much of Dalinar's journey in the Stormlight Archive is centred on his growth. In his early years, he was renowned for being this ferocious warrior who was unstoppable in battle. He lived and breathed for conflict. Fighting was everything to him. He constantly relied on a challenge to invigorate him, to give stimulus to his life. He was never one for politics, believing the best way to decide who should rule be left up to a test of strength. The side who conquers the other shall be the one to reign. As a young man, Delinar was a hot-headed, compulsively violent brute who mercilessly crushed anyone who opposed his brother's vision. Delinar, his brother Gavilar, and their friend Sadius sought to unite the many neighbouring princedoms under one kingdom. To achieve this goal, they began conquering the closest territories by force. Dalinar quickly created a reputation for himself for being able to win every engagement. In fact, such was his prowess in battle, he was capable of clearing a whole battlefield of opponents just by himself, whilst becoming lost in the thrill of slaughter. Although he does fill the role of a barbarian warlord, I should point out that even in his youth, he still had quite the charismatic personality. One encounter I find memorable happens early on in his career. There is this enemy archer who is shooting and hitting Dalinar with arrows. Despite the seriousness of his wounds, Dalinar chases the archer down and proceeds to recruit him, all because he was impressed by this man's ability to shoot him from a distance of nearly 400 yards. This would prove to be a significant moment for Delinar's reputation, as the incident will go on to give him the famous title of Black Fawn, referencing the huge black arrows he was shot with. Another flashback scene which had me chuckling in the third book is one which shows how indifferent and callous Delinar used to be involving anything political and what he considered pointless social customs. The scene I'm referring to takes place during a feast attended by the High Princes where Delinar is portrayed as a bit of an arrogant bastard. He strolls outside during the peak of a high storm, kills an assassin that was after his brother, without sparing so much as a second thought about it, and then casually uses that same knife he killed the man with to eat his steak. He even muses on the fact that he's not a barbarian, because he wasn't going to drink the wine that he dipped his blood-stained knife into. I particularly like recalling events like this from Delinar's past, because when comparing them to scenes in the present, it shows how much he's matured. He's come a long way since the days when all he cared about was how to break another man's bones. Essentially, the triggers which force Delinar to look inward and reflect on his choices can be traced back to two key moments in his life. Now, I'm about to dive into heavy spoilers for the third book, so if you haven't read Oathringer yet, I highly advise you do before continuing, you have been warned. 
Delinar's single greatest failure came when he accidentally burned his wife Evie along with an enemy's family during a siege. Their dying screams haunted him so much he turned to alcoholism to cope with his guilt. However, his alcoholism would create further problems down the line when he is too drunk to help his brother from being murdered by the assassin in white. This finally made Dalinar clear up his act and started him on the journey into becoming the honourable man he is today. The Stormlight Archive has a lot to say about the capacity for people to change, and this is especially epitomised through Dalinar. For one, he used to be quite cynical, but his brother's death prompted him to become an idealistic advocate of the codes of war, and he even went as far as to use the honourable teachings found in the Inworld Book of the Way of Kings as a guide about how to live. But what's really interesting is how this radical change into a noble man comes back to bite him later when he starts to mingle in politics. His reputation as this old violent monster, the Black Fawn, precedes him. It makes it nearly impossible for him to make any sort of headway to form an alliance with other world leaders because they only see the bloodthirsty warlord and not the honest man within. The other leaders of Roshar perceive his honest virtues as some kind of trick to lower their guard. Ultimately, Delinar is viewed as a hypocrite, and all the horrible things he's done in his past keep coming back to haunt him. However, there is a line that Delinar says about hypocrisy which really struck me. It's a line which I think carries weight, and it says this, Sometimes a hypocrite is nothing more than a man in the process of changing. In other words, just because someone used to be cruel doesn't mean to say they are that way now. A hypocrite doesn't have to always be this type of person leading a double life by pretending to be good whilst underneath it all they are wicked and foul all the time. One of the most telling scenes I think that shows Dalinar isn't some grand pretender is his gesture at the end of the first book. You know the one I'm talking about, that mesmerizing scene where he relinquishes his shard blade to Sadius in exchange for the lives of Kaladin, his men and the other slaves. At first Kaladin wonders if Dalinar is just pretending to be honourable, but then he decides that any man who is willing to give up a priceless shard blade to pretend to be honourable isn't really pretending anymore, they're just honourable through and through. I like how Dalinar is trying to make an effort to move beyond his past mistakes. It really drives the point that anyone is capable of redemption. By the end of Oathbringer, he now actively accepts the terrible things he did in his youth. He starts to make peace with what he's done, and realises that it is a sign of his growth as a man. His vow to move past his faults and flaws, and to each day take a step towards becoming a better man, is as inspiring as it is heartening. In the end, Dalinar's arc up to now has been about him becoming a worthy leader to his people. It has also been about him coming to terms with how his nation's obsession with pointless war was self-harming and about how the High Prince's soldiers' lack of discipline was causing them to act like unruly children. Dalinar is very focused on bringing people together to unite different nations against a common threat. He takes this idea of unity a step further by even combining three realms for a short time during the climax of Oathbringer. And he goes through all of this while being hounded by rumours of his mental health and reputation as a monster on the battlefield. I'm eager to see how the rest of the series will play out for Dalinar, as apparently he will have some pivotal moments in Book 5. But do let me know your thoughts. What do you think of Dalinar? Comment down below. Remember to leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and for more Stormlight Archive content, please subscribe. Until next time.